Walker Williams and today we are back at Ormskirk Magistrates Court. The last time we came it was cold as anything and you remember I was telling Bill how cold it was. It's cold Bill. Work has started so we're gonna give you guys an update, have a quick tour and we're gonna be banged up in the UK's oldest Magistrates Court once again. Before we go inside I just wanted to show you around the back. I'm actually stood where the extension used to be. We've dropped that horrible modern flat roof extension and we're going to be replacing it with a brand new beautiful extension that's going to be about two thirds of the size of the existing building. Bill and I have set up a time lapse camera so we're going to show you some footage uh, of this uh, building being taken down now. We're now in what was courtroom one and what will be the Alibi restaurant. Behind me, you'll see this big uh, box. It's not a present or a gift from MD Build, but it's actually the accused box. We're protecting it from all the dust, all the elements and all the building work that's going on, making sure that that stunning wooden panelling doesn't get scratched. And it's going to be the bar that serves drinks to the, all the people, all the guests, all the customers sat around in the tables in the room. We've actually had some CGI's of what this room will look like when it's finished. As you can see, it's going to be a massive transformation. This is going to be an incredible room. I'm actually designing a chandelier that goes from one end of the room and spans the full width, 12.5 metres long and about three metres wide at its widest point. So it's going to be a huge real statement piece. Um, as you can see, the ceiling's vaulted. When we dropped the false ceiling that we had before, nobody realised, including um, the, the local authority, the planners, and nobody knew that there was a stunning vaulted ceiling above the false ceiling. Everyone assumed it was a couple of inches, but actually no, it, you know, it's more like four or five feet. So we've got this extra height, which is incredible, and we're really, really gonna do this room justice and make that ceiling something to behold. Really, really special, um, wow you know, sort of statement piece as people come up the stairs into the restaurant. Uh, you'll remember from my last video, this is exactly where I kind of where I was sat with Sean and the Street Monkey guys and we were having a conversation about the filming that they were doing here. So that's exactly where it happened. So kind of just shows you how far we've come on since then, just stripping the room back and making it sort of safe, uh, getting rid of all the rot uh, and getting it ready for construction to start. So from courtroom one, the main room, we'll be walking through this door. Now, this door is actually gonna be moved. This will be blocked up and the door will be on that corner in the room. The reason for that is because there's a lift for uh, disabled people to come up into the restaurant. Um, and there's also a dumb waiter because the kitchen, the main kitchen is directly below us, which I'll show you in a second. This room is going to be a prep room for afternoon teas and cream teas and the things that we're gonna be doing. Amazing uh, cakes and that sort of thing. But to do that, we need a, a prep room that's away and separate from the kitchen. So there'll be a dumb waiter for food coming up from the kitchen below, but this room's gonna be prep. Now originally, the room next door was also going to be for the kitchen, but thankfully due to good design, we've managed to regain that uh, room for, as another private booth. So back into the, to the main room, uh, you come along this, what was ex uh, currently uh, you know, a blank wall. We're gonna be uh, installing a doorway here which that doorway will take you from the main room that we're in now into the other uh, private booth. So come through. At the moment, we've got to walk around. So this walkway here will be blocked up. So this will be blocked. The door will be there. And then this will be another private booth. Now, because we've only literally just found out that we've got this back, Laura and I haven't looked at plans or designs yet. So hopefully Laura's gonna be coming um, over this weekend and we can look at what we can do to make this room an incredible space for you, your friends and your family to enjoy for afternoon teas, christenings, private parties, private meetings, functions, that sort of thing. We've got this small, more intimate space 
and then we've got a much larger private dining room in the mezzanine above the main room. So courtroom one's on our left and we've got the private room that we've just come from. This is the doorway that Bam from Street Monkeys fell through uh, in the video. If you've seen that, uh, um, the Street Monkeys, the Disney stuntmen at Ormskirk Magistrates Court, this was the doorway that Bam smashed through. Down here, this was the original hallway for the Magistrates Court. It's, we're going to be reinstated as the main hallway for the hotel and we'll run straight through from the front of the hotel there all the way through to the back and through to the extension right to the back of the hotel. So eventually we'll be able to stand here when we're finished. Bill will be able to stand at one end, I'll be able to stand far at the other end and we'll be able to see each other so you can see straight through the hotel uh, you can see we've got these beautiful bricks that we're going to be cleaning up and reinstating and then leaving so that people can see the original facade of the building across from courtroom one we go into courtroom two which is the smaller courtroom you'll remember this one from the last video because this is the one that looked like a james bond's villain's lair if you remember so come on in this one was riddled with asbestos and we had to have a third party specialist team come in and strip all the asbestos out get the paint off the beams and off the panelling and everything else. So they were full hazmat suits, you know, really, real serious, proper job. And they've done all that now and they've made it safe. So the building is completely free from asbestos, thank goodness. Um, the intention here is this roof, that this old uh, roof that's failed, is going to come off. We're putting a new roof on and we're putting it on slightly higher. It's slightly better design. It's pitched so that it doesn't, doesn't leak like all, all, all most flat roofs do. Um, which also gives the apartment more height, more space, more light. There's going to be a mezzanine floor. And then we've just uh, started looking at the staircase that used to take you from courtroom two down to the cells. The intention here is to glaze over the stairs um, and leave them in the apartment. So you can walk across them in the apartment so we don't lose any space, but we're going to illuminate the stairs so that you've got this staircase down to the cells in your apartment, which I think is going to be a really, really cool feature. Right, so you're going to have to use your imaginations a little bit for this one, guys. Try and imagine that there's a wall here and a front door. I've come in through the front door to this apartment. There's now a corridor to my left, which you can kind of see, that's kind of in place. This one's a little bit wider than the one we'll have eventually, just to make the rooms on this side a bit bigger. The corridor doesn't need to be as big in a private residence. So we'll move the wall in a bit to gain more space in the room. There's a door here, and this door takes me into what will be the living room. Now the living room has got this incredible ceilings, which we're going to be reinstating, you know, and, and sympathetically putting back uh, and bringing back to life these beautiful features. This original fireplace is going to be reinstated and we're going to try and get a custom designed uh, gas fireplace to put in its place. I would have liked a real fuel, you know, sort of log or, or coal fire, uh, but it's just not practical. For, both from a health and safety point of view, guests, you know, burning the hotel down and stuff. I know in the old days, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd check into a hotel and there was a fire, roaring fire, which is amazing, actually in the rooms, um, but particularly in Victorian times. But, you know, things have moved on um, and it's just too much risk, too much headache. So it'll be a nice gas fire, nice and safe. Gas fire in the, in the original uh, fireplace, which has been bricked up, sadly, uh, at least 100 years ago. Um, so this is the living room. Uh, there'll be a kitchen behind me, a little kitchenette behind me there. Living room here, TV on the wall there, beautiful fireplace there. And then through this door, that you see here, you're into the bedroom off the living room. So good sized bedroom uh, with a, a beautiful floor to ceiling Georgian window, plenty of natural light. Now, this is where you really need to use your imagination. Try and imagine there's a door in this wall behind me here. You'll walk through this door and you're out onto a landing that doesn't exist. You walk up some stairs, which is on the external wall the other side, which we'll have a look at in a second, that doesn't exist, up into the roof space above us and that will take you into the bathroom of this apartment. But this isn't gonna be like any bathroom. This bathroom is gonna be magnificent. It's huge, the whole thing's gonna be tiled. We're gonna have a jacuzzi bath up there, his and hers walk-in showers, the full hit. I mean, this is really, really gonna be a very special apartment. We are having CGI's made of this, they're not quite ready yet, so we are, when they're ready, maybe we can do a little update. So keep checking back, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like, and when we uh, um, update this video with the CGI's, we'll put them on the back end of the video and you'll be notified so you can have a look at them for yourself. So we're at the other side of that wall now, and you can see there's nothing there at the moment, but you'll come through the door that doesn't exist in the wall there, you'll come through, there'll be a staircase case that runs up this wall here this doorway will be blocked up the stairs will come through to a door at the top which will take you to your bathroom which will sit up in that amazing space there up in the pitch roof I'm really sorry about the noise in the background of this part of the building but the guys are cracking on it's really really hard to get them to start working so the last thing I want to do is stop them 
So the last time I was in this room, you'll remember that the children had broken in, or the kids, should I say, had broken in, and there was loads of sweet wrappers and crisp packets and stuff, and also some sort of smoking paraphernalia, you know, some lighters and things, and I was talking about how concerned I was about their welfare, and also about them burning the building down accidentally. That was this room, and you can see it's, it's changed a lot. There was actually a false wall in front of th these walls, and there was some of remnants of the old wallpaper, if you remember. But what it has revealed is some of the original wallpaper behind the stud wall. So we've stripped it all back now, and you can see it's one giant open space. If Bill follows me around, I can show you this whole open space here is gonna be uh, divided up into two apartments. So we're gonna have two stunning apartments uh, in this space here, one to my left and one to my right. What's interesting about this is that in the design that we came up with, we're trying something new. So you've heard of interlinking hotel rooms where you have one room in a hotel, another room in a hotel next door to each other, and they have two doors. And you can unlock the door from this room, and you can unlock the door from this room, and then walk in between the two rooms for families and friends and things to make the two rooms larger. Well, we thought, why can't we do that with apartments? So to make this space more flexible, there's gonna be one front door with two front doors behind it. What that means is, if you were checking in on your own, and you, you can have one apartment, and somebody you've never met before has got another apartment, but if you're checking in with a, another family, or with friends, or whatever, we'll give you a different key, and you can lock the front door, but you don't have to lock the two internal front doors, and it means that the whole space can be one space, and you can walk freely between. So it just means there's much more flexible space. You know, one large family, two families, friends, whatever, can enjoy this whole huge space together as one unit, or we can split it, give two individual keys, and they never have to cross paths. So I think that's a really good concept that we're going to be trying to make it more flexible. You know, and I'm really proud of that, that design idea. Um, I just, the more flexible we can make the space, the better it is for everyone. So we're now downstairs below what used to be courtroom one. These stairs here are the ones I was showing you earlier that we're gonna glaze and leave as a feature in the apartment. So what we'll do, we're very, very lucky in that the, the, the stairs turn a corner, so the people upstairs in the apartment won't be able to see past this. We'll block up this wall, we'll illuminate the staircase, glass at the top, so it's nice and private, so the people in the apartment can see down the stairs and see the feature, but nobody down here can see up into the apartment. So that'll be blocked off. These cells, uh, we, I, I really, really, really tried to utilize these cells as part of an apartment. But what we found is every cell is just too small to be practical. Because they weren't stay overnight cells, they were just holding cells for the courtroom, they didn't have to be very big because people weren't in there for very long. Because of that, every room is just too small to do something with. We'd have to start knocking walls down and open them all up to make one big room for an apartment. But if we do that, it defeats the whole object because they're not cells anymore, they're just one big open space. So instead, we decided to recreate these in a more practical purpose, as one of the other apartments will be cells that you can stay in and experience that. But, and these are gonna be back of house, so they're gonna be used as storage um, and, and offices and things for the, for the functioning of the hotel and for the team that work here. So it's unfortunate that these won't be customer facing, but it just we, just, we were trying to force a square peg into a round hole and it didn't work. It wasn't gonna work, it would have been miserable space and nobody would have stayed here. And if they had stayed here, they wouldn't have had a good time. Come and have a look. See, this room is just too small to be a bedroom. We've tried measuring out even a king size bed or even a double bed which are very, very small. Um, you know, we like to provide super kings, but you just can't fit a bed in this room without people having to sort of climb over the bed to get into bed. It's just not what we're about. We're a luxury five-star hotel at the end of the day, and sometimes you, you find yourself trying to force something to happen, and it shows in the design, and at the end, the end use just isn't practical. So unfortunately, this is, this is a perfect size for uh, storage, for linen, for the soaps and that sort of thing. So this is gonna be back of house. So off the cells, we have the main corridor. Like upstairs, we have that nice wide main corridor going straight down. That's directly above us and you can see that from the concrete roof. Directly below it, we'll also have an exact same width uh, corridor that runs all the way down through the hotel from the front to the back at uh, ground floor. We're gonna be using what was originally um, the sort of uh, storage area for the cells as um, the, where we keep the lines and the beer kegs and the pumps for the bar. We'll obviously be uh, polishing this back, bringing it back to its former glory in a high gloss black, the cage that protects the precious beer down in the cellar. As you come in through the front door, we're down now at ground level at the front of the property. You'll come in through the front door and you'll be greeted with the door here. 
Because of the uh, electrics and the main gas on the left, we're actually moving this door about three foot this way. But imagine for now we're walking through the door and then you'll be greeted by the main bar downstairs. So along this back wall here of the old police station, and you'll remember this had the horrible uh, tiles on the ceiling. Do you remember those old yellow monkey tiles? Had the smash window here with the fake blood on it, and it had some of that sort of old wood floor that had been, uh, had been ruined. So the bar will run from the right-hand side of the chimney breast there, all the way down here to about here. So we'll have these cell bars behind the bar, which is pretty cool. Um, and we're going to be taking them off. Um, we're going to be, uh, again, sanding them back, sandblasting them back, because they've been painted white when originally they were gloss black. So we'll be doing those a high gloss black, and I think there'll be a real wow feature behind the bar with the drinks on the walls uh, either side of them. And then all of this space here, and all of this space here, is going to be uh, a seating area for the, for the bar. There's a staircase just going here that takes you up to the uh, restaurant above in courtroom one. And then at the back here, to the right, and behind Billy to the left there, you've got the private booths, which used to be the original prison cells. Down this corridor. This is where you would have been marched down by the policeman back in the day, by your ear, and taken into the, <laughs> taken into the prison cells. The, that's a builder's sense of humour. We had Sefton uh, Paranormal Activity uh, Group. They do an amazing TV series that's very popular in America. They came and visited, and I think it inspired the builders to tease each other and start putting uh, ghosts and, and bits and bobs around the, around the building. So here you have the staircase, the original staircase, where the accused were taken up to the accused box above us in courtroom one. Um, that's going to be glazed as well, so that you'll be able to walk up to the bar, look in, and you'll be able to see the staircase through a glass floor. From this level, there'll be a glass door here, so that at ground level, you'll be able to see the stairs illuminated, see through the glass door, and see the staircase that used to take the accused up. It'll be locked, so people won't be able to go in there, but we need to be able to get in there to clean it occasionally. To the left and right of the staircase, you have two of the cells, these are the original cells, and if you remember, I'm not gonna let them do it to me again. Billy locked me in these, in these cells, so that's, uh, that was really funny. It's not funny. <laughs> so, uh, Right, okay, so the guys are currently storing some of the original bars, and you can see here how dusty they are. There's the, a main gate there on the left, and I mean, and this is solid steel. It is heavy as hell. And then you've got the top section there. Now, we don't exactly know where we're going to reuse these, but we are going to reuse them. They're so amazing. I've got to find a home for them. If you have any ideas of what we should do with, this, with these prison-grade steel bars, let me know in the comments below, because I am genuinely looking for help on this. I'm looking for inspiration. Where can we use these? Where can we utilize them in the property? This side section here, if you look real closely, Bill, can you get the camera? Oh, no, 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 not again! Bill! Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, I guess. Seriously, can I come out now? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please! So this is where we had massive problems with the dry rot and it had to be addressed urgently because it would have started to spread throughout the building and would have eventually managed to make it to the joists above and then we would have been in real trouble. So we've replaced all of the rotten wood, we've got rid of all of the dry rot and all of the wet rot and actually this is exactly where the police officer fell through the floor when he was chasing the kids uh, out of the property if you remember. So all brand new joists, all brand new uh, flooring and just to show the level of detail that uh, MD Bill goes to. If you look closely at the floor, you can just see how many screws they use in each of the boards. The reason for this is because it future-proofs the property with. It takes a lot longer, it costs a lot more, but it means there's absolutely no movement in this floor whatsoever. And that's important because, for example, if you had um, a bathroom above the floor, any movement means the tiles move and the they crack, they split, and then water can get out and leak from the bathroom. So the floor is absolutely solid and it's a great foundation to build on. From here, we walk through. So this is where the policeman fell through the floor. This was all rotten. I just wanted to quickly show you this apartment. Now, there isn't really much. We, did, we haven't really visited this room much before, so we can't really say this is what it was before. It was just a room. It has got a beautiful ceiling rose that is original to the property that we're going to be keeping uh, and reinstating. But the reason I wanted to show you this room is because the policeman fell through the floor. 
So the clue is in that. So below us, we have a void. Now, it's only about five foot tall, so we can't really use it for much in terms of practical use, you know, as storage or whatever. So we've got water tanks down there that'll be servicing all of the water that the building needs. But because we have the void under this floor, I had the idea this apartment is going to be a Turkish theme, like a Turkish baths. There's going to be a super king size bed against the wall here. And in this corner, we're going to go for a his and hers jacuzzi bath like we've got in Safari at the Hotel Chester, but we're going to sink it into the floor. I cannot wait to see this. It's, it's not something I've seen before in a bedroom. You've got uh, uh, the super king size bed there, and we're going to have this his and hers jacuzzi bath in the floor. I cannot wait to try it out for myself. I tell a lie when I haven't seen it done before. I have seen it once in Scarface. Manny, look at this. Pelican, play it. Come on, Pelican. It's not easy being fat. We're now on top of the scaffolding at the very top of the old magistrate's court and there are 415 different stones that need attention. Sandstone is beautiful but the clue's in the title, it's made of sand and sand over time wears so you can see it's very easy, it starts to fall away and it's very very brittle, that's the building just melting away. So, we've got a stonemason with about 40 years experience. The guy's a true, true craftsman. He has to take each of the coping stones off the top. They're massive and heavy. He has to take them off, repoint everything, rebed them, and put them in. Now, the way they're attached, there's actually a dowel, which is like a, uh, which is like a, a, a solid tube, like, like that, like that without the, the, the eye, without the ring bit. So it's like that, and it goes through the stone into the one below and holds in place. The problem is, after a lot of time, hundreds of years, they, they rot, they fall away, you know, they, they expire, and then these become loose. And obviously I don't need to tell you what happens next. They fall off and, and, and kill, kill someone, which we can't have. So every single one of these has to be taken off and redone. And you can see they've started down here. So we've started knocking them back, I'm rebedding them in and making sure they're safe for another couple of hundred of years. And you can actually see some of the dowels in, in the stone there. So there's one. And you can see how it's rusted and starting to fail. Well, the ones on top are starting to fail. And you can just see there where they sit in. See how it sits in there? So that's what this is. These are being knocked back now. And then we have all the fascias that need to be retouched up uh, to make the building look immaculate and brand new. Unfortunately, the previous owners use concrete um, to fill the gaps. The problem with that, particularly the sandstone, is the concrete doesn't breathe, and sandstone needs to breathe. So when it gets moist, the concrete seals that moisture in and it expedites the rotting process and just destroys the stone even quicker. It's not great. We really need your help. I really do need your help with some great ideas for repurposing those metal bars. If you do have any ideas, please leave them in the comments below, and you might even see your great idea come to life at the Olmsgate Court Hotel. As always, thanks ever so much for watching. I really hope you're enjoying the, the journey that this incredible building is going on. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Bus! And you'll be notified when the next video on this property is ready. I'll see you again soon.